They are one of South Africa's most beloved couples, Nandi and Zex Madida. We're excited to have you here. Um, I think when you guys read the February issue of Glamour, you'll read more about their story and they talk about generational wealth. They talk about their children because this is baby number two on the yes. way. Yes. Congrats once again. Thank you so much. Um, tell us about your love. When did you meet? Um, when did you know that Zex was the one for you? Oof. So, our la well, first of all, you know, it's so strange. Well, in Zex's case, um, he was the one who was obviously famous before me and I always loved his music I was always obsessed in fact I was scouted by Universal um, Records the label and I remember wanting to work with him uh, this was before I knew him and they said you can't afford him so I was like oh well and then I ended up working with some like backroom producer which was fine but I, I always wanted to work with him I never had like a crush on him or so I think you never know yeah, sad is not convinced. I saw that. <laughs> and we met at the, it was a summer. The summer nomination party. Yeah, nomination announcements, yeah. yeah. And it was on my birthday, 20th of March. Um, and I was like, oh my goodness, I love, love your music. And what did you say? I love you. <laughs> I've read that. <laughs> yeah, he said, I love you. And that was the biggest turn off. I don't know about you ladies. Someone says, I love you, and they've just met you. That's like, no, you just want to beat me, that's all. Yeah, that, so it was uh, a huge turn off. Yeah. And for me, you want to tell the story how you insisted on... Having your number. Yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so I insisted on having her number, and she, she wouldn't give it to me. So I kind of like embarrassed her, you know. I, uh, there was a friend of mine who it was a common friend. I was like, can you just ask her to give me her numbers? Your I promise, okay. I promise I won't be, I wouldn't bother you. I would just check on you. We just, and uh, and she yeah. kept on saying no, no, until like there were like some guys who are coming to take photos. I'd be like, please, can you just ask the number for? <laughs> and it was like, okay, here's my numbers. Yeah. No, but there was then, a mutual friend to make. Yeah, that the mutual yeah. friend. Obviously, yeah. he was already there. And I think the rest is history. I mean, it started there, and then we had a... I begged her to have a first date. Like, I literally begged. Like, I was like, I'm going to beg because I really want to, I really want to, you know, have this woman as my wife. You know, I mean, I, I knew. I mean, it's the same uh, thing as, like, the previous couple. Like, I, I knew seeing my wife on, on TV before I met you. Like, I saw your good time video I was with friends I was like this is going to be my wife like I knew so when I met her I was like I love you because it's already yeah. and, and so can you understand uh, so yeah and then when, when we had the first date I was like I want to marry you but I want to give you time when, when you're ready we're gonna get married like oh, you have to give me time so after two years she was like I think I'm ready I was like okay let's go get married because I, yeah. I was I was very I was very Adam I was clear yeah. I was like okay this is what I'm doing you Either know? me or Kelly Rowland. Yeah, one well, of the two, I, yeah. I actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I told it. Yeah. Yeah, Kelly yeah. Rowland, I didn't cheat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If so it's Kelly Rowland. So you had to settle for me. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. the other, one of the, I was yeah. more tangible and accessible. <laughs> yeah. So this one time, Kelly Rowland was in town and my yeah. wife, <laughs> yeah, so my wife right. calls me, like, where are you? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm performing, I think it was in She's Guruma. Yeah, she was in tab yeah, like a Nkuruman, like away from Johannesburg. I'm like, yeah, why? Kelly Rowland is in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nigga, Kelly Rowland's in town, <laughs> and you can't do nothing, <laughs> even with Global Citizen, because unfortunately he couldn't make it. <laughs> She's such a beautiful person. I was like, Kelly Rowland's still here, <laughs> and you ain't here. <laughs> That's like me and Pharrell. Yeah, Although I know, Pharrell, but... I got to meet Pharrell, uh, we got to Woolworths. work together for the yes. Woolworths campaign. Unfortunately, he's like my uncle now. He's really old. So, and God always does that. He makes you meet your biggest crush when it's like, uh, yeah, I'm a little man. <laughs> right? yeah, so. anyway, yeah. um, I think one of the most important takeaways from the article in Glamour this yes. month where you guys talk about legacy yes. um, and what, you want, what you're building towards and you know you talk generational wealth you've bought land for your first son Shaga 
how important is that, that planning and, you know, working together as a couple in planning the future together to that, of the, to that level? That's so, first of all, it's important for us to say we have a blended family. Um, in fact, someone who understands generational wealth very well is my stepson. He's going to be the next investor. He is so serious about life. Uh, and he goes to a fantastic school, very smart. And um, so he's always spoken about, yeah, what does he say? Yeah, I want to yeah, be a property investor. And by the time I finish high school debt, you should have at least four properties. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, I mean, and then almost there. By the time Actually, by the time I finish uh, university, at least you should have six properties so that I manage those properties, and then I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna start from there. You yeah, know? so he keeps us. Focused, yeah, so actually. yeah, it does. But I think I think one thing that I'd like to talk about when we talk about wealth mm -hmm. is the issue of money in a relationship and in marriage. You know, um, yeah. the relationship, mm -hmm. the relationship couples have with money and sometimes how it can affect a, a marriage and a relationship because suddenly there are things that you guys cannot afford. Suddenly there are things that, that you fight, fight about that you shouldn't be fight, fighting about solely because money is not there anymore. You know? Or it's not, it's not like how it used to be. And, I, and, 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 and it's one thing that I've seen so many relationships struggle with. And um, and so when we, when we were talking to, because we, we go to therapy with my wife, not yeah. because we have issues. Yes, therapy is Yeah, but we go to therapy because, as you know, like, especially in, in Africa, some people who are Africans will say, ah, but we never used to go to therapy. We are Africans. But it, because when you, when you look back, historically, we are communal. So therapy was everywhere. Yeah, Bekonu Goko, Bekonu Goko, Konum Kulu, and, and oh. other people who will help you Ooh, understand your wife, uh -huh. help, and then help your wife understand you. Mm -hmm. So there was like therapy which was guiding you, because when you get married, someone will come and be with you at home. And right now you're in Sentin when there's nobody. Yeah. You don't even know yeah. your next door neighbor. Yeah. You don't even know anybody. Yeah. And you guys are just, you're just doing this life thing. Just the, just the two of you. And there's nobody to help you understand each other. So, so therapy is not, a, it's not white, <laughs> for the lack of the better way, because someone says, no, it's a white thing, you know? So therapy is very important. We, we grew up as African, they just we didn't know. We didn't have, it wasn't said, this is therapy. So when we were attending therapy with my wife, you know, which helped us a lot to, to align, you know, just to align, because I'm, yes. I'm from the township. My wife did like suburbs, like, <laughs> like, I'm, like I always say that you, you are, tell him that. I always say that you are a default snob. model C and a snob, you're, you're like a default, I think you are supposed to be a snob and then something happened, you know, um, so we are seriously, seriously misaligned. We are misaligned because of the lifestyle. We are misaligned because of how we, 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 where, we, where we grew up. We are misaligned because there are things that we just don't understand about each other because of how we grew up. And, and that's exactly what is happening to relationship. Before we could understand that we were misaligned, we used to fight about little things that yeah, didn't make sense. Nothing. My wife wouldn't share, wouldn't share like, something Drinks. to eat with me <laughs> and a drink with me, but she would kiss me. And that used to annoy me, like, this lady doesn't like me. <laughs> You know? I'm like and then, and then, then later, then I found, then, I, then later I found out that at home, it was like you, you don't, you don't share, you don't share this thing. It was so when you go to school, take your stuff. This is your stuff. Yeah. You know? Then, Actually, then I understood later. Yeah. You know, like, like so. Uh, why I'm talking about that, sorry, my love. No. Why I'm talking about that is, it's, it's, it's because we don't talk about money in a relationship, and I think it's that's where you need to start. Money, because money is one challenge when it comes to relationship. And we, and we, my wife and I, we had to talk about it. Like, babe, one day I will not have money, or we might not have money. And, and when that day comes, what are we going to do? And I remember us agreeing and saying, let, let whatever that we fight about, but let's never fight about money in our yeah. relationship. Like, money shouldn't be part of a conversation, like we don't fight about that. When we are broke, when we happen to be broke, we do not fight about, about that. Broke with investments and property and stuff, so make sure your brokers 
Not the real broke. <laughs> yeah. The R&B broke. <laughs> well, I'm just, well, I'm just putting it out there because yeah. it's, it, I think it's something that we, we, we really... We really don't 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 yeah. don't have conversation about and 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 a lot of and a lot of relationships sure. fail because a conversation that could have just been a minute like why did you why did you do this but if there's no money that conversation becomes why did you do this you always do this thing and then we are hungry here and then and 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 you know <laughs> like like something that 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 would have just been a five minute argument yeah. then it becomes an hour because there's no money. And I think for me, no. sorry, I've been talking quite a lot. Of, but I think for me also, um, having grown up in the suburbs, now that he's exposed me, <laughs> I remember I always say this to Zegs, why I don't romanticize money, even on social media, you'll see we don't speak about what we have. Um, it's because I remember seeing so many people's cars being repossessed, neighbors. I grew up in La Lucia. So that's, you know, the mansions. And, and I just remember almost every day seeing Oh, my neighbor, oh, they, and all of a sudden their stuff is being repossessed, but they had parties every week because they were so obsessed with keeping up a certain perception about their lives rather than living within their means, you know, because as a couple, it was important for people to think they were living this life when they weren't. And for what? Now everything's repossessed. Now, do you get what I'm saying? So my perception of money was almost ugly, where it's just, if you see money as a tool, to do what True. you want to do, that's it. You know, invest, uh, yes, to survive, but that's all it should be. It shouldn't be, yeah. you know, Zakes and Nandi got this car and, you know, they live in this house. And I think it, it's become that and it's become a part of our relationship. And so that's why we're so obsessed with letting yeah. people know that, yeah, it's, it's not paramount. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I have one more question on my side. I know you guys are pressed for time. Yeah, we'll take a question from the audience. Yes. Please hashtag, guys, hashtag glam power couples. Hashtag glam power couples. Yeah. Let's talk style, entertainment, fashion. You guys are an entertainment yes. um, couple. You're in the industry. Yes. I, I, I picture your home being full of music and dance and joy. Yes. Uh, we've seen a picture of a video actually of Shaka dancing. Oh yeah! I think the Michael ja was it Michael Jackson? I can't yep. remember. Yeah. So how important is that? And how is your home? Is it as fun as I see it in my head? <laughs> actually, funny enough, today was really fun. Uh, Shaga is just Zex. He's yellow bone Zex. I gave birth to Zex. Like I say, honestly, exactly like him. He's exactly like him. He speaks like him. He dances like him. Same legs, same but everything genetically. Well, my genetics sucks, at least I know now. So, <laughs> but um, like today, for example, it was exactly like that. No, he lost night. <laughs> there was, sorry, we were watching videos and he's like, no, 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 because <laughs> yeah, he didn't like no, the yeah. song. Yeah, it was like a horrible song. I think yeah. he didn't like it. <laughs> and we all agreed it wasn't a good song. So we, we are always dancing and laughing, of course. Obviously, when there's good times, you know, it's not always perfect. Uh, but it's exactly like that. It's a lot of laughter. Yeah. Um, I'm obsessed with, I love home decor. So Cromerville is my hood. <laughs> so I, in terms of our home, it's very authentically African and chic. Not too modern. I don't like too modern of a home, but just from that perspective. So it is an extension of who yeah. we are. And he loves style. So he has many clothes, more than me. As you can see, I'm actually wearing his suit right now. Uh, yeah, and it's like the whole oversized. He's got uh, a label coming out called Ghetto King. So I'm wearing him right now. Yeah, absolutely. He has a lot of clothes. I thought I'm pregnant. Let me just, you know, <laughs> take this stuff. Yeah. But that's how it is at yeah. home, right? Yeah, no. well, yeah, we, we, yeah, we have a piano. Yeah. Um, yeah, Shara also has his piano. Yeah, he's got a mini one. <laughs> um, we, we, we play music so loud. Yeah. Uh, we, we laugh, we dance, you know? Um, I think it's just, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a home, man, that, um, that my wife has created, because, you know, a happy wife, happy life, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> you are focused, my brother! <laughs> you know, um, I like that, yes! <laughs> yeah, happy, happy, happy wife, happy life. <clears throat> I'm gonna take one question, guys. Yeah. A very quick question before we let the Matitas go. Hi. Hi. Um, 
talking about money, I just want to find out from you guys, if you're in a relationship with somebody who has different ideas of how to spend money and all of that, how do you guys bring that together so that you guys don't fight about money and have money be a big issue in the relationship? Oof, that's a great question. Yeah. Not a happy medium, because, for example, I love your shoes, by the way. But for... <laughs> um, <laughs> My wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, for example, we... Our bankers... Um, He's a ghetto guy from Kwambashu. So being extravagant and like getting money now and spending it now is, you know, the way the way you gotta live. You know, yeah. you gotta you gotta live for today, you know, you have to be happy. I'm the opposite, where it's all about investing and you know, long term and buying land and you know, growing up in the suburbs. You know, it's long term life life covers and stuff. Although no, you're responsible from that perspective. Actually, you've taught me a lot. <laughs> from that. But but you have to find a happy medium. Yeah. I think. Is it's just yeah. and it, it's that my, my it's my two cent advice, you know, to each and everyone or every everybody who's here. Mm. Just have a relationship with your banker. You know? Have a relationship Not with your banker. Yet. Uh, let your banker understand your finances, you know, and just be open and be honest about it. You know, like, like I used to be scared that you're gonna be judged because sometimes, you know, like, oh, I, now I have, because I made money, I lost money. I made another money and I lost money. So this is like my, my, my third up, and then I made my wife. <laughs> and I don't wanna go down yeah. anymore, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, 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 and it's just a relationship. She has a relationship with the banker. I have my relationship with my banker, but we just plan of like, this year, this is what I want to achieve. And this year, this is how much I think I'm going to make. So, so this year, you're going to invest it here, and then we're going to speak to my wife. What are we going to do this year together? And what is it you want to do for your career? And what is it you want to do for my career? And okay, this is what I want to do for my career. This is what I'm going to invest in my career. And this is what we're going to, to invest in terms of our relationship. How is the life cover looking? How is what this, this looking? How is that looking? How is that investment looking? What, what did your banker say? The, you know, like, like that's, that's, that's the relationship that we have. We, we have... We talk about we talk about that not all the time, but there's a time when we talk about just just the status of our finances, you know, yeah. and how do we move from there? If I could intercept just quickly, it is it's transparency, yeah. which is most important. You don't know, you know, when you die and you know those stories where you're just like, ah, oh, God, you know, you owed so much. So transparency is key. But like I said, a happy medium because our lifestyle is honestly the same. So just to see the logic uh, in, in each other, because being frugal like I am uh, is great, but you also have to live you know, at the same time. And also spending too much is irresponsible too. Uh, so being frugal at times is, is paramount. So I think just finding your happy medium is, is, yeah, is key. Hope that Thank you very much. It. Thank you.